Welcome to Minutes That Matter. In this video, we will learn how to configure RAID volumes. Let's open our Windows Server. Login as Administrator. In Server Manager, we can go to Tools and open Computer Management. To access Disk Management. Now, to open Disk Management, we can also right click on Start and select Disk Management or Computer Management. Now, either ways, we want to access Disk Management. So, let's keep that window full screen. Now, we do have a DVD drive. Let's eject the DVD in the DVD drive. Now we have a disk that is disk 0. We want to add three other hard disks so that we can configure RAID volumes. Now to do that, we can click on VM settings and then click on add to add a new hard disk. Next. Next. Here we'll select, for this lamp we will select 4GB. Next again. And then finish. Now let's add two more hard disks with the same size. So click on add. and give the same hard disk size that is 4 GB and let's repeat one more time okay so we got four hard disks each of 4 GB in size now let's go back to our disk management and we can see we got four disks in total disk 0 1 2 and 3 now, we need to first of all bring the three hard disks online and then initialize them using a partition style. Now, for this lab, we'll choose MBR. Now, all the three disks are online and notice all of them are by default set to basic type of disk. Now. I want to create a new simple volume or say a primary partition. Now make sure quick format is enabled and let's say we go with just 200 MB. Notice the color in the bottom represents the type of partition or the type of volume it is. So let's create one more simple volume or in here it is basically a partition. Now, when we call it volume, when we call it partition, answer is on a basic disk, we'll have partitions. On a dynamic disk, we'll have volumes. But in Windows machine, whenever you try to create a new partition, even on a basic disk, it will show volume. Now, a basic disk will only support four partitions. two types that is primary partition extended partition but four partitions in total so notice the last partition which i wanted to make with 200 mb of disk space notice we got an extended partition created so always the fourth partition you create in your windows machine or the last partition you make will be extended partition on a basic disk. Now we can have multiple logical drives, but the number of partitions per basic disk maximum only four. Number of drives that can be multiple. So that include partitions that is primary partitions and then logical drives. For now, let's delete all the partitions 
and live one for our test. We will convert this basic disk into a dynamic disk. We can also convert it using command prompt. But for now, let's convert disk 1, 2 and 3 to dynamic disk. Now please do not convert basic disk 0 into dynamic or else we may have to restart the computer twice. Now notice the primary partition turned into a simple volume. Now let's create one more simple volume and see how it looks. There it is. You can see the color in the bottom represents the type of volume. Now let's go ahead and create a spanned volume. Now for a simple volume we need only one disk. But for spanned we need at least a two. In this case we'll select three. Ok, so let's say in the disk 1 we give 200 MB, from the disk 2 we select 300 MB and from disk 3 we select 400 MB. Now notice the total disk space is 900 MB. So we can create a spanned volume with various disk sizes from different hard disks. Now while choosing to conclude make sure you select perform quick format so that it will save your time. Now you can see we got a new color that represents spanned volume. Now let's go for striped volume. Now striped volume minimum number of hard disks is obviously 2 but the maximum we can go up to 32. The speciality of striped volume is it consumes exactly equal amount of disk space from multiple hard disks. But the interesting thing is it is the fastest volume in our volumes list. Now let's go ahead try with a mirrored volume. Now mirrored volume supports only two hard disks. So if you want to add the third one the add option itself will be grayed out. Any two hard disks but only two. The minimum and the maximum number of disks we require to create a RAID volume is only 2. And by the way, if you select 200 MB from each disk, the total amount of disk space will be only 200 MB. That's the reason we call it mirrored volume. If you copy any data in one drive, the other drive will also have the same copy. Hence half of the total disk space is actually used and the other half will act like backup. Now let's go for RAID 5. Notice I have given 200 MB on each drive but I get a free space of 400 MB. Now the rest of the 200 MB has gone for parity. Now we can keep 400 MB of data wherein we used 600 MB in total. So this is comparatively better than our mirrored volume. Hence RAID 5 volume is very popular. Why? Because it gives us fault tolerance at the same time more data to store on the disk. Now we can also do one more thing. Now guess what? All this time we were creating new volumes. What do you mean by mount? Now mount is a nice feature wherein if you run out of all the drive letters you can use mount to use the free space available in your computer hard disk. So you don't require a drive letter to assign uh, to your free space what you are using. Instead you can use any drive letter uh, and give the mount name. Advantage It won't occupy any drive space but we can have extra available space though we run out of the drive letters. So you can see now that drive is not having any drive letter but we can use the disk space as a mount which is mounted on some other drive. 
there you can see in the F drive we mounted this new location. Now we got enough space added but F drive will not utilize that space. It is dedicated for the mount. Now if you delete the mount it will not affect the drive in which the mount is there. Hence we can always use extra space in our computer though we run out of drive letters using mount. Okay, I believe you have tried all different types of volumes and by the way, you can also do something really interesting with a simple volume. That is, you can extend a simple volume or you can shrink a simple volume. Now, both can be done without losing any data. And when you are creating a volume, you can also use a separate type of file system. Now, it depends upon your requirement what kind of file system you would prefer. Now the most preferable file systems will be NTFS or REFS in case of Windows Server 2016. REFS stands for Resilient File System. NTFS New Technology File System which is the most commonly used in any Windows machine. NTFS provides good data security as well as compression of the disk so that we can have more data that can be stored in the disk. It also provides some interesting features like quota, encryption, etc. Now NTFS file system is used where you want security and also if you have a disk which is extremely large and you want to have a single partition of it, yes NTFS is the right choice. On the other hand FAT32 has a limit of 32.7 GB, we cannot create a single partition or a single volume with FAT32 which is more than 32.7 GB. So you can see we just extended the volume. Now the total disk space close to 400 MB. Now we can also do the opposite shrink the volume. Now I am removing 200 MB. We can shrink the volume without losing data. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, delete these volumes and partitions. Now by the way, you can break a mirror or remove a mirror. Now breaking a mirror will make a mirror volume into two simple volumes where the data resides on both the volumes. But when you choose remove mirror, then the entire data is lost. Now I believe in this video you have learned how to add new virtual hard disks, how to convert them from basic to dynamic, how to initialize them and also how to create different types of partitions and volumes. Now when you delete all the volumes from a dynamic disk you can see 
that it will convert back into a basic disk. Hope that was informative. Thank you for watching.